Allah I want you to begin tonight by visualizing yourself in a place that is extremely unfamiliar to us. I want you to imagine if you were the person that the Prophet ﷺ chose to go out on the hijrah with him. Imagine being out in the middle of the desert and not only do you fear for your own life, but you fear for the most consequential life that has ever been sent for humanity right next to you. At every moment you're in the desert, you hear a sound. You might see some dirt start to kick up. Imagine trying to go to sleep between Mecca and Medina, knowing that you have a murderous group of people that are after you and there's a price tag on your head, a bounty on your head. Every tribe that you might come across, every Bedouin, every noise, every speck of dust, every time you hide in a cave, every time your animal, your camel starts to make an unfamiliar noise, how many times would you have thought that death is near. Now transport yourself to Rafah right now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be with our brothers and sisters in Gaza. Allahumma ameen. The satanic Zionist regime flies a drone over you. So you constantly hear that buzzing sound. The bombs are dropping on tents, hospitals, the snipers are out. There is absolutely no place that you feel safety. And it's in those moments, dear brothers and sisters, that you have to garner something incredibly special inside of you to deal with something that is particularly sadistic. This is happening now. In the moments that we are speaking, by the time I finish my talk tonight, it is very likely that we will have more shuhada out of Gaza. When I put you in that mindset, in that place with the Prophet wasallam, I want us to make a connection, not just between the lack of fear that you have for your enemy or for your difficult circumstances and the, the courage and the resilience of a people. But there's a very specific scheme of courage that our religion plants in our heart. And it's a courage that is based in certainty. It's a courage that is based in this concept called tawakkul, trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and trusting in Allah's divine plan. Abdullah ibn Abbas عنهما, he describes the Prophet وسلم, on that night as he departs for Medina. And he says, and listen to the words in Surah An-Nasa'i, قَالَ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْهُمَا خَرَجَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مِنْ مَكَّةِ إِلَى الْمَدِينَةِ لَا يَخَافُ إِلَّا رَبَّ الْعَالَمِينَ يُصَلِّي رَكْعَتَيْنِ That the Prophet وسلم, departed from Mecca to Medina, not fearing anyone except for the Lord of the world, and he prayed to Rakas. Why include La Yakhafu illa Rabbil Alameen? He only feared the Lord of the worlds. Because the Prophet, وسلم, as he departs from Mecca to Medina, he understands that the one who controls the heavens controls the earth. That the one who protects from above is the one who protects from below. That the one who protects in front of you is the one who watches your back. That the one who controls your vision and your perception also controls the vision and the perception of your enemy. That the one who allows your horse or your camel to move is the same one that allows their horse or their camel to sink into the dirt. 
that the one who controls your heart also controls theirs. That the one who instills courage in your chest instills fear in their chests. That the one who is controlling the elements and the emotions, the atmosphere and everything in between is the Lord of the worlds. Therefore, this is not a type of courage that is born out of a natural ability to be able to weather the circumstances. This is a different type of courage. This is not the type of courage that comes from not caring so much about your life. This is not a courage that is born out of recklessness. This is a courage that's actually born out of fear. But it's a different type of fear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا تَخَافُوهُمْ وَخَافُونِ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Don't fear them. Fear me if you are indeed believers. فَلَا تَخْشَوْهُمْ وَخْشَوْنِ Do not be enamored by them. Do not consider their power. Instead, consider my power. You are actually afraid, but it's a different type of fear. I often think about Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And we know Khalid as this brave warrior as he was. And before Islam, he was a general. And before Islam, he was courageous. And before Islam, he was a military genius. But I guarantee you that the Khalid that was on the horse in Uhud against the Muslims was not the same Khalid radiallahu ta'ala anhu on the horse as they were striking into the heart of the Persian and the Roman empires. That there was something else in his heart, that his courage was nurtured by something else. You find strong people that aren't Muslim. You find strong people that don't believe in anything. You find courageous people whose courage is born out of recklessness. They don't care what you do to them. You find courageous people who are dedicated to a singular value or principle, but don't have the whole picture. But the believer's fear and faith is anchored in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and in particularly trusting His divine plan. Al-Hajj Malik al-Shabazz rahimahullah ta'ala, Malcolm X, shortly before he was assassinated, he was being interviewed by a Chicago reporter. I can't recall the name of the reporter right now. The reporter, as he's interviewing Malcolm, between a firebombing and assassination, he says, I painted to Malcolm all of the gloomy scenarios of his assassination. And he just walked to the window of the office and he stared out completely in contentment at the birds as they were chirping and flying from tree to tree. And then he turned around and he looked at me and he said, Sir, I don't believe that a single one of these birds can fly without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't believe that a bird can fly without Allah. I don't believe that anything operates without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not afraid of these people. Why? Not because I fear no one, but because I fear a greater one. Not because the elements of the desert and the elements of assassination and the elements of a tyrannical genocidal army and the elements of an empire that continues to surveil and intimidate our community here at home and the elements all around us are not daunting but because I am in such consideration of the one that is above them that I really don't care about them. Our courage our fear, our hope is anchored in knowing our Lord. You cannot truly overcome your fear of everyone else unless you fear one who is greater than them. And your fear of Him is not like your fear of them because your fear of Him is anchored in love and in knowing who He is, not in fleeing from Him because you believe that He will hurt you. And you cannot have that true fear of him unless you have tawakkul, that true trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's anchored in the divine scheme. When the Prophet ﷺ walks out of Mecca, لا يخاف إلا رب العالمين. He doesn't need to know 
how Allah is going to protect him along the way. But he knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect him and that nothing will benefit him or harm him except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows it for a divine purpose. Therefore, I trust his divine plan. When Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu sleeps in the bed of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as he is on his way and Quraysh sees a figure in the bed of the Prophet sallallahu who has already fled to Medina. And Ali knows that they are intending to kill the Prophet sallallahu and they could easily just throw their spears onto the bed. Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu sleeps at peace because he knows who controls his sleep and who know, he knows who controls their vision. He knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He trusts Allah. Therefore, the elements become subdued in who your creator is. It's anchored in that divine plan. When Musa alayhi salam is facing the sea on one end and a tyrant in the Pharaoh behind him, and a genocidal army that is trying to massacre him and his people. And his people say to him, Inna la mudrakun, we are caught. Musa alayhi salam says, No. Inna ma'i rabbi, sayahdeen, my Lord is with me, he will guide me. It's not just knowing that Allah is there, it's knowing that Allah has a divine plan. Therefore, fala takhafuhum wa khafuni in kuntum mu'mineen. Don't fear them, fear me. Where is that courage born out of? When Khalid was fighting against the Muslims. Khalid was fighting for tribalism. He didn't believe in an afterlife. He was ready to be reckless with his body and die for the tribalism. But when Khalid knew Allah and he knew the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're no longer finding courage out of recklessness. You have courage in hopes of his reward. That no matter what they inflict upon us as a community or as individuals, no matter what they do to our people, I want you to know, dear brothers and sisters, that every single shaheed in Gaza that exited this world in the most horrific of ways, if you were to ask them, would you want to come back to this world, each one of them would say, absolutely not except to be a shaheed again. Because in his divine plan, the greater the pain, the greater the reward, and all of it will eventually transpire in his victory on earth and his dominion in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not making mistakes. Allah does not make mistakes. It is one of the strangest things in the world to hear someone outside of the people of Gaza say, why is this happening to them? Where the people of Gaza never asked that question about themselves. If there was anyone that would have the nerve to say why, it would be the people that are the greatest recipients of the torment of the Israeli and the American governments right now as this genocide is co-carried out by the two. But they don't. They know why they're here. They trust Allah's plan. They are anchored in that plan. And there's a different type of fear. I want to bring it to each one of us. I too am afraid. I'm not afraid of the enemies of our people. I'm not afraid of this government. I'm not afraid of Israel. I'm not afraid of their power. I'm afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking me why I didn't do more for the people of Gaza. There's a difference between being afraid. There's a difference between being afraid of the worldly consequences for your actions and being afraid of the divine consequences for your inaction. At some point, we look back and we see ourselves in this twisted moment of history where different worlds collide endlessly and instantly on our phone, constantly. Where you live in one but your mind is somewhere else, your heart is somewhere else. And fear is a tactic 
that is used by those who masquerade as powers on this earth to paralyze you from pursuing truth. It's the oldest tactic in the book to crucify and to mutilate, to make an example out of someone so that no one else ever thinks about standing up in the same way that they stood up, to humiliate and berate so that a person has more fear of their reputation than of their resurrection. It's the oldest tactic in the book and in every single episode of Empire in history, at some point, you meet a people who just don't fear you. At some point, every Pharaoh meets a follower of Moses. At some point, every tyrant meets someone who has the power of faith that is not afraid to stand up to them and to speak a word of truth in their face, even if that means that their bodies will be taken away from them. Because they operate with an understanding that we are souls with bodies, not bodies with souls. And that this world is a temporary stop in our story of existence and not the end all. And they want to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having said that they did right by the moment, that they did right by their brothers and sisters. I'm afraid, I'm just not afraid of them. I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I don't fear His creation. We fear the consequences from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't fear the consequences of these people. For too long, dear brothers and sisters, we have been shackled. We've been shackled by fear in this country, speaking for our brothers and sisters overseas. We've been shackled by fear to speak for our brothers and sisters right here at home. You have political prisoners who it would be terrifying to say their names from a convention stage because to challenge the United States security apparatus is to put yourself in its path. And so we sat by the HLF 5, the Holy Land Foundation 5, were taken away from us. Dr. Afia Siddiqui was put away and by the way, her sister is here, and I want you to say Allahu Akbar as loud as you can to show that we will stand with Dr. Afia. Takbir. I want you to know that your sister is not forgotten by this community. Imam Jamil Abdullah Al Amin was put away in a sham trial, a leader in this country, a hero in this country. And many of us looked away. Because to support the HLF 5, to support Afia, to support Imam Jamil, is to risk staining yourself with what they were smeared with. It's time for us to take a page out of the book of the people of Gaza and to show that we are not afraid. We are not afraid to speak the truth. We are not afraid to bear the consequences of the truth. We are not afraid of the people of falsehood. We are afraid of meeting the Creator who sent His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in truth, for truth, holding us accountable for our silence. Now here's the good news. Here's the good news, dear brothers and sisters. You're seeing courage bred all over the world right now on college campuses, in the streets of the United States and Germany and France. Throughout the entire world, they have not been able to quell the fever that has been born out of Palestine. They have tried to torment, they have tried to suppress, they have failed in every regard, they will continue to fail, insha'Allah. They have overplayed their hands because they have hearts of stone and they do not understand what is in our hearts and the hearts of the people of Palestine. <laughs> our fear is born out of faith and our faith requires tawakkul, trusting in the divine plan. And the divine plan is victory for our ummah. 
and reward for every single person that sacrifices in his cause. We are not afraid to stand for the truth and face the consequences. I want to end with one thing, inshallah ta'ala. Some of you might have seen uh, this particular brother get thrown out of uh, Anthony Blinken's hearing the other day. I don't know if you all know this, but this administration does not like nicknames. And so what do you call Joe Biden? What do you call Joe Biden? What do you call Joe Biden? That's good. He doesn't like that. Staff doesn't like it. It's humiliating. It's embarrassing. And only Allah knows what he's going to see in his sleep tonight and talk about tomorrow. But his failure to see the tens of thousands of Palestinians massacred by his constant sign-off requires that we challenge him, that we shame him, because this is perhaps of the most shameful episodes of American history. Anthony Blinken doesn't like the nickname Blinken the Butcher. Came out in one of the leaks of the State Department. Some of you saw this brother, Muhammad Habba. Come on up here. <laughs> I just had to do this to make sure he doesn't heckle my speech. I saw him backstage and I was like, Alhamdulillah, you're not arrested again. Because it seems like he's always in jail. <laughs> Muhammad and our brave brothers and sisters from Colombia and those that you have seen have stood in the face of the tyrants here and have said to them what they hate to hear, but in the process delivered a clear message to the rest of the country and to the world that we will not rest until Palestine is freed. And you know what's amazing about, about what, and, and by the way, I have to say that this is the incredible work, mashallah, of AMP, American Muslims for Palestine, the Irvine 11, mashallah, who I shouted out earlier today, who set a precedent for student activists as well. All of the work that AMP is doing, all of the work that our brothers and sisters are doing that are challenging this government, this administration at every turn. Somehow, he managed to speak longer while getting arrested than I did in the last like 30 minutes. <laughs> really impressive, mashallah. But this isn't a joke. This isn't a joke. We do this because we feel like we have to. And we fear the consequences of our inaction. And we fear meeting our creator with that level of neglect for his creation. If the people of Gaza are special, advocacy for them is special. And to all of the Zionists that will be reporting on this event, I want you to know from this crowd that this community will not turn its back on a single Muslim figure that is targeted by this state. And will not turn its back on a single institution or organization that is targeted by the United States government, whether it's a democratic administration or a Republican administration. We are all ICNA, we are all MASS, we are all CARE, we are all AMP. We will not allow them to isolate us and to pit us against each other and to smear or stain or surveil one of us without the entire community saying, back off. And here's what I'm going to have Muhammad do because I know that they're here. It's always nice. You know, the Islamophobic outlets report more on the Ikhna Convention than it seems like Muslim media does as a whole. So I know that y'all are here. Uh, I want Muhammad to lead some chants for Palestine here. And I want this to be the loudest, the loudest. We got walls here. We got all these thousands of people contained. I want you, say what you wanted to really say to Antony, uh, the butcher Blinken. 